Hello everyone. Our today's topic is IS 95 standard. IS stands for interim standard. This is also a second generation standard and it was given in the year 1994 and according to a report in the year 2001 there were around 80 million subscribers in this standard. So according to a report in the year 2001, 80 million subscribers, they adopted this second generation standard. And this is uh, a basically digital uh, cellular system that was given by US and it is based on CDMA technique. So it is a US based system, US digital system and basically it was based on CDMA technology and this standard was standardized by EIA oblique TIA TIA stands for telecommunication industry standard and like IS136 it is also backward compatible with the amps channel or the frequency band so it is backward compatible with amps channel and we know that amps channels are basically they are dedicated channels for the first generation that is meant for your analog communication and due to that mobile stations and the base stations they can be economically produced for dual mode operations okay and uh, this is 95 this allows users in the same cell and also in the adjacent cell to use the same set of frequencies or radio channels so users in same cell or in adjacent cells can use same radio channels and this happens due to the usage of d triple s cdma system because this uh, particular standard it is based on uh, d triple s cdma system now what is this d triple s cdma system D triple S stands for direct sequence spread spectrum and uh, in this uh, particular uh, system uh, what happens is uh, the transmitted signal is uh, spreaded and it is made wider in bandwidth in comparison to the original information message bandwidth and uh, this is uh, done just to avoid the interference with the uh, adjacent channels and after despreading uh, in the receiver end the original information bandwidth is restored and the unintentional or the intentional interference is reduced and uh, the message bits that are modulated by the pseudo random bit sequence they are known as the uh, spreading sequences and each bit in the spreading sequence is called as chip this we have already uh, studied when we talked about uh, cdma uh, multiple access technique so here each uh, message bit that is a part of your spreading sequence it is called as your okay and uh, there is a use of specific modulation and uh, spread spectrum techniques in its forward as well as in the reverse links and uh, because of usage of same set of frequencies in the same cell and also in the adjacent cell uh, the frequency reuse factor here is one so here frequency reuse factor is one because we are using the same set of frequencies in the same as well as in the adjacent cells now channels and frequencies in is95 for forward channel operation frequency range is 869 to 894 megahertz for reverse channel operation frequency range is 824 to 849 megahertz and when we see that the forward and reverse pair of channels they are separated by uh, about uh, 45 megahertz of frequencies so forward and reverse link frequencies are separated by 45 megahertz okay and uh, when we use uh, this is 95 in the pcs cellular systems uh, then uh, these are designed to use the operating frequency of about 1800 to 
2000 megahertz so for the use in the pcs systems uh, this is95 it uses the frequency range of 1800 to 2000 megahertz and the user data rate in is95 is 9.6 kb per second and also the chip rate is 1.2288 mega chips per second or it is equal to 1.2288 into 10 raised to power 6 chips per second so this is the chip rate uh, as this standard is based on cdma technology and uh, we have already studied that in cdma uh, technique uh, different users are given with the different uh, pseudo random sequences and they are actually called as the chips and the chip rate here is 1.2288 mega chips per second that is uh, approximately equal to 1.24 uh, megahertz of frequencies okay and now we have to uh, see the protocol architecture of is95 this basically follows the uh, structure of osi model uh, protocol structure let me draw the structure first Okay, this is the IS95 protocol architecture, and uh, here you see it follows uh, actually the um, OSI model uh, right from the layer 1 to layer 7. And uh, what we see here, the layer 1 is uh, basically uh, in the bottom, and it is uh, responsible for frequency usage and radio transmission. That uh, what frequency channels, which frequency range that we have to use for the transmission, that is the responsibility of layer 1. and it also makes itself responsible for the effective delivery of voice and data packets over the channel and uh, then we have uh, this layer 2 and uh, layer 2 uh, basically is called as the max sub layer and it takes care of uh, channel ma management uh, as we see that uh, rlp is there that is a radio link protocol and that takes care of uh, the, the channel management and also the automatic repeat request is generated by using this uh, protocol and uh, it is used for uh, cellular interface uh, and multiplexing is also done in the second layer that is uh, your max sub layer and uh, then in the upper layers that is from layer 3 to layer 7 we can see that uh, uh, signaling component is there packet data application component is there voice application uh, component is there then circuit data application is there so uh, what we see that both circuit switching as packets and packet switching is uh, happening effectively uh, in this uh, particular uh, architecture and in the packet switching we see both tcp and udp uh, ip based packets can be uh, transmitted uh, because this is a second generation standard and here in the second generation standard we have both voice as well as the data services so this architecture is basically uh, comprising of all these uh, components and uh, the user data is first uh, conventionally uh, encoded and interleaved to the to adjust the data rate in this particular standard and then the signal is spread using the walsh code uh, actually we have uh, studied in the cdma based system that there is a, a chip sequence or a pseudo random uh, long sequence and the chip rate is 1.2288 uh, mega chips and uh, that is also called as a walsh code that is a pn sequence uh, that is a pseudo random sequence and basically it is a group of spreading codes and uh, they are having good autocorrelation properties and poor cro cross correlation properties that is uh, what we call as walsh code and uh, we uh, multiply the user data with the walsh code just to scramble the data and basically these walsh code they are backbone of our cdma based systems and they are used to develop the individual channels in the cdma systems and uh, now we have to uh, study about uh, the uh, is95 
channels and uh, there we have uh, forward as well as reverse channels so first first we will discuss about uh, is 95 forward channels uh, in this standard we have uh, around 64 channels uh, that is from 0 to 63 and logically these channels are separated from one another by using the cdma spreading code that is uh, what we call as walsh functions or walsh codes or these walsh codes they are also called as orthogonal codes there are uh, some channels some are uh, control channels some are traffic channels so the first control channel in the forward channels that is called as sync channel a uh, sync channel basically uh, it is used for sending the synchronization information to the mobile station so it sends synchronization information to mobile station and it is an optional channel and basically it comes in the uh, control channel category and used for the forward link communication and the data rate here is 1200 bits per second that is the data rate which is supported by this channel and uh, then uh, next we have uh, another control channel which is called as paging channel paging channel is again an optional channel and there are four different types of control messages which are sent by using these paging channels and uh, the number one message is paging then you have overhead messages then the order messages and the uh, channel characteristics messages and here the data rates are these are 2400 4800 and 9600 bits per second so these are the different data rates which are supported by this channel and uh, next we have uh, uh, another control channel in the forward channel category that is our third channel which is pilot channel this uh, pilot channel sends the timing related information to the mobile station and also it compares the signal strength of base stations and here data rate is 19.2 kb per second and then in the fourth number we have traffic channels and out of 64 three are our control channels and the rest 63 channels are our traffic channels so there are 63 traffic channels and these uh, traffic channels they actually carry the user data that is the payload which each particular user wants to transmit and here data rates are 1200 2400 4800 and 9600 bits per second okay so it varies from 1200 to 9600 bits per second and it is spread by a pn sequence code and uh, next we have reverse channels in is95 uh, reverse channels basically they group the user data into 20 millisecond frames on the reverse channel so they group the user data into 20 millisecond frames on reverse channel there are basically two types of reverse channel one type is called as access channels other type is called as reverse traffic channels this is denoted by acs and this one is denoted by rtcs and these acs and rtcs they share a same frequency assignment and these acs that is that are access channels they are identified by distinct long user codes and they are used in conjunction with base station by the mobile station to interact and reply the paging channel messages so basically they are used to reply the paging messages and they are used by the mobile stations just to reply the paging messages on the control channels and there are about 32 access channels per paging channel okay and here these rtcs they are basically the reverse traffic channels and they carry the user payload in the reverse direction and uh, they operate on variable data rates but in access channels the data rates are fixed so uh, this is uh, all about the introduction of our 
IS 95 standard where we have learned uh, briefly about uh, this standard. This is basically a second generation standard and here we have learned about the uh, protocol structure of this standard and also we have studied about forward and reverse link channels of this standard. So now next is our modulation of forward and reverse channels. So uh, here in this diagram uh, we see that uh, forward channel modulation in the IS95 and uh, here the user data is sent uh, to an convolution uh, in encoder with the repetition unit and uh, then uh, this is uh, given to a block interleaver here a code symbol is generated at this place and then it is sent to a block interleaver unit and uh, this block interleaver unit is basically used uh, for uh, uh, AWGN that is adoptive wide cache noise or fading channel and it corrects the impulse noise and uh, be, uh, used to correct the burst errors uh, also and uh, then we have uh, uh, next the data is scrambled uh, by using a Walsh code sequence or Hadamard code uh, sequence and uh, uh, then in the lower part we see that uh, code for nth, nth user a particular code that is your PN sequence that is the long codes generator uh, which generates a PN sequence and it is given uh, for a particular user and then that is uh, having a chip rate of 1.2288 mega chips per second and this dec decimeter unit this uh, divides that uh, chip sequence rate uh, by 64 because we have 64 different forward channels and then we will get 19.2 kb per second of data rate and this is then again sent to decimeter unit and a multiplexer is used on the upper side and then this is forwarded to the two different channels and uh, on both the channels band pass filter is used band pass filter is basically used to uh, select the particular range of frequencies and to reject the other range of frequencies which is not desired by the user so this is the is95 forward channel modulation scheme and now uh, next we uh, see the next scheme is our uh, reverse channel modulation scheme of is95 standard and here we see that long code mask uh, for a particular user n is generated by using a long code generator at the rate of 1.2288 mega chips per second and uh, on the other side when we see that information bits on the reverse channel they are sent uh, like the, with the data rate 1200 2400 uh, 4800 or 9600 bits per second to, and this is given to the convolution encoder uh, which is having a repetition unit as well then a code symbol is generated in the encoded form and then this is given to the block interleaver block interleaver further uh, corrects the impulse noise or also it is used for uh, correct the burst errors if, uh, if if they arise and then a code symbol is given to the 64 uh, bit array orthogonal modulator where this uh, symbol is modulated and then uh, it is converted into a wall chip and then a component that is called as data burst randomizer is applied uh, to it and further it is Zord combined again and then it is so split it into two different channels uh, as I and Q channels both are carrying the band pause filters and this is just for uh, to select the certain range of frequencies so this is how the forward and reverse channel modulation techniques uh, work in the IS95 standard so this is all about IS95 standard this thank you for watching